calling all Golden State Warriors fans. Dub Nation, where are you at? I'm C Train. Oh, there you are. Hey, I'm C Train. Welcome to C Train Station. Hey, can we talk a little bit of Dub's basketball? Can we talk about the Warriors real quick? I got some observations um, after the Cavs game. So here are some Warriors observations after their loss to the Cavs. Very much not a pretty first half, a decent second half, right? There's a court, the Warriors have lost against the Clippers and now against the Cavs. An interesting correlation, or this is like a it happened in both games, right? In the Clippers loss, Buddy Heald, who is currently the Warriors' second leading scorer, Buddy Heald, of course, you know, Buddy, he had eight, eight points in the loss to the Clippers and three points, only three points in the loss to the Cavs. Is that showing us something? Technically, because like, listen to this. Technically, he is absolutely the second leading scorer on the team, Buddy Heald. He is statistically, that cannot like be undone. Statistically, he has, you know what I mean? So, so stats wise, he's the second leading scorer on the team. And against the Clippers in a loss, he had eight points. In, against the Cavs in that loss, he had three points. As the Warriors don't necessarily have a tried and true, like legit, Buddy Heald can score, but is he a legit second scoring option? And against high quality teams like the Cavs, does that matter, right? So are, is this just some chance thing or our other teams are they going to start to see that if you if you shut down Buddy Heal, so you got to shut down Steph, or you got to at least try, right? But then if you do hone in on Buddy Healed, what happens off of that? I think that's going to be that's going to remains to be seen, right? Also, Trace Jackson Davis in the two losses. This is very interesting. Okay, Trace Jackson Davis had I believe four points in the loss to the Clippers and in the Cavs point. Lost. He had three points. He, Trace Jackson Davis is the starting center for the Warriors. He is the starting center. He starts, right? Or the majority of the time, I guess we could say. But, but right now, he's like the starting center, okay? To have four points total and three points total, both in losses, what does that show about the Warriors? Is there something to be said that in their only losses... Their second leading score is being held, just, just almost shut down. And also, their leading center is not getting points, let alone points in the paint, right? He's not getting points in general, okay? So go, those are, these are just some observations. These are just some things that I have observed, right? So against talented teams, the Warriors are going to need to be able to score in the paint. The Warriors have to get, have to have access to the paint and to those points in order to beat the good to great teams in the NBA. In the dynasty years, I believe this was the most underrated thing about those guys. So many times, in my opinion, you would have, a, Andrew Bogut could get like 10 to 12 points off of just, cause he, 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 was, he was a huge dude, right? He didn't have to load up really that much when he dunked at all. Boom, just, he'd get the tic-tac-toe, boom, toe dunk, toe dunk, toe dunk. Okay, so the Warriors need to be able to, if they don't have that tried and true classic center who's going to be able to get those, those, those paint points, those singles, as Steve Kerr said. Steve Kerr says like those easy points in the paint, those, those tic-tac-toe type of buckets are like singles. And, he's always, and three-pointers, those crazy Steph three-pointers are like home runs, okay? The Warriors... In my opinion, the dynasty years, the most underrated thing about those teams is that they were able to get the singles, able to hit those money, e easy, easy buckets. So, in, and in my opinion, the single opens up the home run. So I don't think it's vice versa. I think that it's easier for the Warriors to run plays in the beginning of the game and if they aren't getting transition buckets and get like tic-tac-toe type of points in the paint then and that opens up things on the perimeter then just bomb away on the perimeter and that opens up things on the inside i believe that generally 
It's about getting those easy points, those singles, and then that causes the, that space um, for, for easy buckets. Then we have a condensed defense, right? So it's like if the Warriors get any points in the paint and defenses condense, right, or, or you know, shell up a little bit, it's over. Because then the Warriors have any space on the outside, it's completely over. It's, it, they'll, they'll drain three pointers all day. You got Buddy, you got, you got Moody, you got Steph. Good outside shooters, right? So I'm not saying this is not like any trade thing or anything like that. But so the Warriors can help solve the problems of getting easy buckets in the paint by whether it's Kuminga driving downhill, okay? towards the bucket, towards the rim, putting pressure on the rim. GP2 working the baseline. He gets a lot of like tic-tac-toe type of alley-oops off of base, off of just, uh, GP2, trust me, he's really good at working the baseline. He's, he's great at that, to get easy buckets by the basket. Um, so, or it's TJD or Loon, right? I think that, that Trace Jackson Davis and Looney need to, gosh, be, be nice and decisive inside. If they're going to be aggressive, go for it. Go for it. But be decisive inside. So whether it's any of those four players, right? Kuminga, GP2, TJD Loon, right? Even Draymond. He, he's got it. He, he, needs to, he needs to get some buckets by the basket as well. Um, the Warriors are going to need to manufacture easier buckets against the better teams. And I think that if in observing the Cavs game, I, j just follow me here real quick. Against the Cavs, I got this general sense with this Warriors stagnant offense, and we'll actually continue on that in the, in the next topic. But because of the Warriors stagnant offense, it, it, it seemed like they were, quote, like out of ideas on offense. Like they would just pass it like one or two times, and then it ended up being like a, an isolation dribble with somebody like no like like Moses Moody going on an ISO dribble to the basket it's like or or even Lindy Waters right it's like those are we the warriors need to do better they need more movement they needed more movement against the Cavs right movement on offense more ideas that's what i call it right so it's like dribble dri okay how about this when all else fails do, go pick and roll at the top of the key Dribble drive, right? And then have two shooters on the wings in the corners, right? There you go. It's like when all else fails. But the Warriors, instead of like having that tried and true when all else fails, just spam the pick and roll or something like that. You know what I mean? It was like, stand there, stand there, stand there, throw up a contested three-point shot. Not going to work. It's not going to work. And it's really not going to work against the great teams, okay? The Cavs are a very good team. But like the, the, the Oklahoma City are like a great team. We'll see... What happens against a team that locks down like the Oklahoma City Thunder? So that's why I'm trying to get this out, right? That's why this video is, is sort of has, has good value is because that's something that we can assess in the Oklahoma City game. What happens if the Warriors in a, in a half court type offense, how can they create more ideas through movement, screens, plays, but they can't just run out of ideas and huck up a shot? That's, it, that's not a turnover, right? But that's not going to be sustainable for repeated success over a long period of time. So, of course, overwhelmingly, this is a thing that we need to know above, above and beyond, absolutely 110%. It all starts on defense. Two more times. It all starts on defense. One more time. It all starts on defense. Can I celebrate? It all starts on defense. The Warriors need to impose their fast and physical style of defense. This is what I've loved about the Warriors so far that I think that they can do well at. Blitz the ball handler with almost a reckless abandon until you have an, advan an advantageous matchup on, def on in defense and, th and then lock down. An example, let's use the Boston Celtics game. Jay, uh, Jason Tatum is dribbling the ball up, right? He gets past midcourt, and the Warriors blitzed him. They were able to funnel the ball into the hands of a Drew Holiday, who I love Drew Holiday. However, they would like, the Warriors were able to blitz players until they funneled the ball into Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday got the ball. Then the Warriors locked down. 
chilled, settled, and locked down. Drew Holiday is an amazing player. He is not the best offensive player, like one-on-one -on -one or anything like that. He's a great play. He is a good player. He is a good offensive player, but we, the Warriors would rather have Drew Holiday with, with the ball on an ISO or something like that, on a good defender, right, than Jason Tatum rocking and rolling. Jason Tatum can put up 40, 50 on you, you know, so. Drew Holiday, not so much. I think you guys, y'all know what I mean. So, all starts on defense. We have to know that. I already did the one, two, three type of thing, and it was twice, but you know. Three questions moving forward, though. Here are three questions that I have for the Warriors moving forward after their game. And I, we'll really see. I think that the Oklahoma City game is so key and paramount to answering a couple, a few of these questions moving forward. We saw something with the Cavs. Some things were repeated in the Cavs' loss from the Clippers' loss. And now we will see if it is actually a trend against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Three things. Who scores at the basket and inside? Who on the Warriors can score consistently underneath the basket and at the rim? The, that must happen. And I, it, this isn't like a go trade for somebody. It's, this is like they, they can do this in-house. Work GP2 on the baseline. Get Kumingo running that. But who scores baskets consistently inside? Okay? Second question. What will Heald's numbers look like with a bigger sample size? Okay, so when teams start to really, when teams start to treat Heald almost with that, with the gravitas that they treat Steph with outside, because he's such a good outside shooter, what is, I thought my phone was going to fall, I reacted really weird. Okay, what is going to happen when teams hone in on that with a bigger sample size? Okay. Did the Cavs unlock something with stopping Buddy Heald that maybe can be repeatable? That needs to be seen, and that I think will be that will be answered a lot uh, tomorrow, or excuse me, not tomorrow, against the Oklahoma City Thunder in that game. Okay, what? And this is the third one. I think this is the most important one. What lineup can get consistent stops? This is important because I believe it flows off of that second question. If Steph and Buddy Heald can't necessarily be on the floor at the same time as a effective one-two combination for scoring because they are literally the first and second scorers, okay, stop. Then if, if they can't get consistent stops, then is that going to be an issue moving forward because only one of them is necessarily playable for a prolonged period of time, for a sustained period of time. And here is like the cut and dry and easiest example of like, I'm not trying to be a punk, but like here's a slippery slope, 100, like you'll be able to understand exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, like if you saw, okay, if, if Giannis was on this team, like either the primary or secondary score, we wouldn't, like the Warriors wouldn't need, he'd be paired up with Steph, the Warriors, Nobody would be there. Nobody would care if he was on the court. Steph and Giannis were out there all the time because Giannis is a two-way player, right? He can play, really hold his own. He's a great defensive player. Buddy Heald is good and he's got quick hands, but not so much. Over a prolonged and sustained period of time, can Buddy Heald or and Stephen Curry or, or can there can they consistently be a one-two scoring punch? Because in, in my opinion, it's like if they're not playable together. Buddy Heald is statistically the second leading scorer, but is he the second option when he's not out there with Steph for a repeatable amount of time? Wouldn't he just be the first option on that set rotation? You hear what I'm saying? If Steph is out, if they're not playable together, Steph and Heald, then Heald is the number one option because he's the number two scorer. If he's not, if Steph isn't on the floor, he'd be the number one scorer. That's the number one option, right? So it's those types of questions. I may be overthinking it, probably overthinking it. I do that a lot. It's a good thing. It's a bad thing. It happens. But it, that's something to watch out for. Can Steph and Buddy play defense sustained long period of time? Because if so, the league is in trouble. On to OKC. It should be a great game. And heck, of course, I hope you enjoy that OKC game.
Hope you've enjoyed this video. Definitely hope you subscribe to those subscribers. Thank you so much. I, it just means the world to me and it helps out the channel so much. I'm trying to grow the channel, trying to get the good word out. So for your Golden State Warriors content, I'll see you next time at C-Train Station.